Thanks for your time this Friday. The Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, we saw today, uh, Ted, was in the Hunter Valley trying to win back uh, what he describes as working class voters through funding for green jobs in seats dependent on fossil fuels. He was heckled by a bloke with a, a new uh, sign, no new coal, no new gas. That's what you're going to get be up against, I guess, if you go nuclear. Are you up for the fight, Ted? Oh, look, Steve, I think we just have to do what we believe is right in Australia's national interest. And there's no doubt when you take on some difficult topics, you're bound to cop it. But if you're not prepared to fight for what you believe is right for the country, then go do something else for a living. Well, I think uh, more power to you. And I think what we're going to have is a, a genuine contest come the next election over possibly the most important issue in the country. So good on you. I mean, it seems that you're headed toward a policy that will embrace nuclear power plants that will be built on the sites of coal-fired power stations. Now, I mentioned in my column in the Herald Sun that's up online that that seems to me to make a hell of a lot of sense, Ted. Take the Latrobe Valley as an example. Is that the direction you're headed in? Steve, it's certainly the key advice we've received from experts around the world that if you are prepared to leverage the existing infrastructure at retiring coal plants, then you not only reduce capital cost on transmission lines and the plant itself, but regional communities can avoid a, a steamrolling of transmission lines. Uh, you can avoid the alternate, which is tens of thousands of kilometres. And so the policy that we're yet to release uh, is seriously looking at a, a coal to nuclear uh, strategy. Um, and we've been talking very openly about that now for nearly 12 months. Um, and the more that we have researched it, the more it is making sense. Have you got, uh, and I know, I know you, you're going to release a policy later this year and you're not going to do it right here, right now, but we can talk around that. Have you got a nuclear reactor model in mind? Uh, deliberately, no, Steve. And again, we've taken a lot of advice on this. Um, Ultimately, you need to ensure the right people are determining the technology. And uh, with all due respect to my colleagues and myself, uh, we're not them. Um, and so what we need to do is ensure that we have the policy settings that will enable a balanced mix of technologies. Um, and we are seriously looking at, at the, uh, the zero emissions nuclear option. But as for what specific technology, um, no, uh, we won't be seeking to determine that from opposition. Uh, but we will, we will be saying, um, as we have in the past, that we are only interested in the new and emerging technologies. Uh, no one wants to touch Soviet-era nuclear technology. Don't want to touch that stuff with a barge pole. Um, we are talking about only the latest designs, micro-reactors, small modular reactors and large reactors. Let me mimic what the government's going to say. They're going to go out there probably at the weekend and they're going to say, these guys have got no idea. They don't know what they're talking about. These things cost too much money. Nobody's going to invest in them. And that's their only answer. Well, then they've got no idea what they're doing. What's your answer to that criticism from the government? Well, Chris Bowen has already been saying that for about 18 months. But Chris Bowen is as honest as Albo, seriously. Um, if, if the Australian people still believe the, the politicians who promised a $275 reduction in power bills, that they happen to know what's going on, um, the same party who has totally lost control of the electricity grid, the same party that tells lie after lie after lie, they can't tell the truth about their own policies, Steve. So uh, I don't think anyone's going to take them seriously trying to give guarantees about the coalitions. Ted, I, I think the states and the, and the federal government uh, don't understand what each other are doing. I mentioned at the beginning of the program, Victoria, with that dreadful uh, storm that went through earlier in the week, uh, are, are about to go down the road of banning gas, not letting you attach a, a gas hot water service to a house. If your stove breaks down, you can't reconnect to gas. But the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, and the hunter today seem to pour a bit of cold water on, on the gas solution. Have a look at this. Gas will continue to play an important role, particularly in industrial issues. But the idea that you just 
go from now in 2024, shut things down full stop means you turn off the lights. Exactly the opposite to what the Victorian government's saying. Uh, uh, except he wasn't in Victoria. Otherwise, he'd be saying what they want to hear. Um, and that's the problem with Labor. If you look at what did happen uh, in Victoria, and my heart goes out to those people who were suffering under the storms and those who have gone without electricity. But what came to the rescue was a mix of gas and hydro. That's what saved the day to at least kept the electricity system running, albeit half a million people experiencing blackouts. Um, it just goes to show the importance of gas. We need gas. We need more gas. We need to pour more into the market because the more gas we have in the market, it's supply and demand, greater supply. It just means prices will come down. But again, it's the ideological zealotry of Labor. You'll find when the Prime Minister is in Victoria, he'll be uh, poo-pooing gas. But of course, if he's in the Hunter, if he's in certain parts of WA or Queensland, it's thumbs up. Again, uh, if you want to trust Albo, um, I, I'd be cautioning you against doing so. So just finally, Ted, I mean, the opposition is heading toward uh, telling Australians that we need a, a combination of all of the resources we've got. And that includes, of course, coal and gas and nuclear energy, hydro, the whole lot. If, if you have a combination of all of those things, we're a country rich in natural resources then you don't blow up your own economy, right? Yeah, you're, you're so spot on, Steve. I mean, it's just, it's just pragmatic, right? And it's based on the lessons we've learned from overseas. Um, we are blessed with an abundance of resources. And the trick for us is to work out what is the right mix to ensure that not just the lights turn on and that we can decarbonise, but we can have affordable energy for mums and dads, for small businesses, for large manufacturing. Um, energy really underpins our entire economy and way of life. There's a way we can do this if we're humble enough to learn from other countries and have a balanced mix of technologies and everything to date that I've learned says zero emissions nuclear energy should form part of that mix. Sensible views, Ted. Uh, appreciate your time on a Friday for a chat. Thank you very much.